Band on the run. <laughs> it's been stuck in my head ever since I did it, so we gotta come back to this album. Hi guys, welcome to Lee Reacts. So, hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. It's McCartney Monday. How could I not be? I bet we're about to be lifted up and, you know, plenty of dopamine flowing. That's what Paul does. Um, we'll be listening to two tracks from Band on the Run. Two tracks that were highly requested on the video that we did uh, during the previous month for the Paul McCartney Spotlight videos. We did... What, three tracks or four tracks in this album? Let me see. We did Band on the Run, Jet, Bluebird, Let Me Roll It. Oh, not I've done the live version of Let Me Roll It. And then 1985. Um, we're going to be doing the two tracks, Miss Vanderbilt, which is the first single from the album. And then Picasso, Picasso, Picasso's Last Words, Drink to Me, which I, um, apparently there's a part of Miss Vanderbilt in that song as well. It's the longest song on the album, apparently, as well at five minutes and 49 seconds. So we got about 10 minutes, 11 minutes worth of McCartney here. Let's go for it. I'll link my McCartney playlist up there. We got plenty of stuff in there. And probably after the video, I'll link my Beatles playlist. If you're new, if you want to go watch all that stuff, man, I got a whole rabbit hole for all the Beatles. <laughs> so let's go. This is just uh, me. No one requested this. So good job, Lee. All right. Miss Vanderbilt, Paul McCartney and Wings. Well, is it Paul McCartney and Wings, technically? It is. Let's go. Don't forget to leave a like, maybe a comment with another McCartney track to do for the next McCartney Monday. You never know. I might just pick it. Miss Vanderbilt, three, two, one, go. Oh, three, two, one, go.
so different from this. But still, it's not at the same time. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm just saying. Picasso's last words. Uncle Al Uncle Albert Albert Halsey. So I don't Bill Collins? Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
Sorry, I've been lost in this. I really have been. It's like an adventure <laughs> in a song. Apparently, Ginger Baker does percussion in this. What a strange oh. combo of songs. Hey, I love it so much. This probably goes right into 1985. I love that little electronic sound, wherever that is. Or for all I know, that's some kind of instrument. <laughs> that was awesome, man. What a strange, strange, strange combo of songs. But those might have been some of my... I wouldn't say my favorites of McCartney's, but those are some of his better songs. Like, at least in the, you know, experimentation and the instrumentation he had there. This whole album, every single song I've heard from it has been a winner, to be honest. Um, this might be up there with Ram On as, like, my favorite album from his of his um let me see um because now that means we've done everything except mama nia mama nia no words and then i haven't done the studio version of let me roll it i have done the live one so i have heard it um there's so many catchy choruses on this album there's so many um i don't know he's just so good at that you know what i mean like he's so good at that infectious just like earworm chorus that's just stuck with you um and this is mostly him i think this is him linda and denny that's it other than i think ginger baker did some percussion for the second track um uh, but then howie casey did the sax um <laughs> that's it though uh let's see uh this was the first single released um it was not released as a single in the uk or us but as a single as in continental europe and australia interesting uh apparently it still did pretty good uh it was Howie Casey sax, Denny Lane guitar, Linda McCartney electric piano, and then Paul McCartney everything else. <laughs> Bass, drums, guitar, and vocals. So I, it said that uh, the guitarist and the drummer, I think, quit right before they left to go record for this album. So Paul had to do mostly all of it himself, him and Denny um, and the Linda. So that, well, that sucks. But hey, they basically came up with a genius album, though. And I know that they got like robbed and stuff, and there's all kinds of crappy stuff that happened to them down there and i think it was lagos um lagos nigeria uh emi studios apparently the studios were very lacking and uh not up to par for paul at least but they made it work man uh it whenever you put paul and linda together they usually come up with some good stuff uh and you throw denny in there too man that you can't beat that dude <laughs> like seriously like i, I know the post beatles output it's kind of hit or miss for people. It seems to be like, you know, for Paul, at least I know a lot of people mostly like John stuff. They love George's early stuff. Um, but I I've seen a lot of different, um, people and different groups. It seems like liking certain parts of Paul's catalog, but that's the sign of a healthy catalog and a fan base right there. And everyone's got a different favorite, you know, I think that's awesome. And Paul so varied, but still always himself. Like these songs are very different for him. And I like that because he, I'm not going to say he's usually in a box, but he's got, he knows his bread and butter. I'll say that. You know what I mean? He, he, he knows his bread and butter and he goes back to it when he needs to. And he, no matter what, he's got it, you know, that's it. That's it. Um, but when he can go outside the confines of what I'm used to hearing from him, at least, you know, uh, color outside the lines a little bit, make it a little messy, you know what I mean? It's, it, that wasn't perfect by any means, but I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I liked how, 
kind of disjointed the second one felt it felt like you know what mccartney does and have you know two separate song ideas put together or three and then he had that visit back to jet um that's pretty cool or reprise whatever and then the first one i'd say be my favorite though uh miss vanderbilt i love the chorus and that but it the piano that um linda plays i'm guessing it's very cool the drums from paul were great that was a good fill on the toms both times it came up um but it's just catchy and then it's not catchy at the same time he's such a uh it's so the duality of paul mccartney is so crazy bro because it's like crazy love songs simple love songs silly love songs whatever you want to call it or is it stupid love songs one of the one of those four you know what i mean um that's what people think of him but then you go listen to the whole album and he's got like banger after banger after banger and it's so awesome bro i love it i love it and it's so cool that all the beatles post breakup they all had a good run, you know what I mean? Like they're just musical titans that'll never be replaced or replicated, you know? And um, I'm glad that I finally caught on and started listening. And that's all thanks to you guys and all your wonderful requests. It really has shown me stuff that I never knew and I never thought I'd know. I never, I didn't really care. But then when I was kind of forced to sit with myself and look at my own culture and music and realize, wow, this is, you know, we're walking on a road and kind of, you know, spitting our gum out on it and letting people step on it without even knowing who paved the road. You know what I'm saying? I think that's uh, disrespectful. And I think it's uh, detrimental as well to uh, our future and success in the arts, you know, because um, if we outsource our creativity to the robots, we're done. We're, we're just done. You know what I mean? It's going to be a whole different world after that because we live for stories. That's what our lives are. That's what we aspire to be. That's what we listen to every day in one form or the other. Um, and we just, you know, if we outsource creativity to the, to the, yeah, to the robots, we're just done, bro. It's, it's, it's a, it's game over. Um, you've already outsourced rhythm and, uh, harmony to the robots. Creativity's next if it's not already there. And I think that's very scary, but I think as long as we got real people, playing real instruments and then, you know, playing real music. I think we, we got a chance, but we have to get to that point where it's in schools. Again, we got to make music affordable so people can actually <laughs> afford to play. Even me, I mean, I make enough to get by at least for my family and stuff. I don't got, I don't have any money for gear. I wish I'd have a fucking setup right now, but I don't, you know, and this sucks, but it is what it is and we keep on marching um definitely liked uh both of those songs sorry to get off track um i like denny's guitar with paul's guitar in the first track I, I definitely liked that first track way more than the second one but i still liked what he went for with the second one it's still good you know don't get me wrong but that first one was a very very solid paul mccartney and wings track so if you have a pick for next week leave it down below i'd really appreciate it i'm down for whatever and uh this album fucking rocks bro i can't wait to finish it up i think it's only like two or three tracks and so maybe we'll finish it up one week and um yeah oh yeah the beatles playlist i'll put it right there thanks for watching bye